Wednesday the 10th of January, the first section of what will eventually be a 480 meter long viaduct was pushed into place, marking the start of a year long process that will involve constructing two bridge spans at a time before pushing the entire structure out onto the piers. The Wendover Dean Viaduct will take trains over the Misbourne Valley in Buckinghamshire, situated only a few kilometres north of the Northern Portal for the Chiltern Tunnel. The viaduct is being delivered by the EKFB joint venture made up of Ifage, Kier, Ferrovial Construction and Bam Nuttall, who are also delivering the Tame Valley Viaduct, which I visited at the end of last year. EKFB are delivering 80 kilometres of the route from the northern portal of the Chiltern Tunnel to Long Itchington Wood in Warwickshire. Although this isn't the first time a push launch has been used in the UK, I believe it is the first time that it has been used on this scale. And it'll be the first time a major railway bridge in the UK has used double composite construction. The deck is being constructed using steel beams which are being constructed by a specialist manufacturer in France and are then brought to the site by ferry and by road. Once they've reached the site, the eight individual steel sections are welded together to form two complete spans. This process takes around three months, after which the entire structure is pushed south. The weight of the assembled deck for the first push was only 590 tonnes, but by the time the bridge is ready for the final push, it'll weigh a massive 3,700 tonnes. As you can imagine, pushing that sort of weight will be an immense challenge. However, it is made easier using the same technology used for non-stick pans. To begin with, the entire structure will sit on temporary supports, between which Teflon pads are placed, which dramatically reduces friction. Four pads are used per pier, with two upper and two lower pads. The pads have a high friction service on one side to keep them in place, and Teflon on the other side. The bottom pad stays in place on top of the temporary supports, whilst the top pad is fed in by hand, with the top pads having to be continually fed in and captured as the beams progress. To push the deck, a winch and pulley system is used to move the structure at approximately 9 meters per hour. So in fact, technically, I should say the bridge is being pulled. The entire operation takes around 9 hours to complete, after which work begins to prepare for the next set of beams to be assembled. The red structure you can see at the end of the beams is a temporary guide which tapers slightly to help ensure that the bridge meets the temporary supports on top of the piers. Once the whole structure has finally been pushed into position in about 12 months time, the structure will be jacked up and the temporary support will be replaced with permanent bearings before the whole deck is lowered onto the final position. The viaduct will have 10 spans with 9 piers, the tallest of which will be 14 metres high. The double composite construction being used will be less carbon intensive than other bridge construction methods. While steel and concrete composite bridges are not uncommon in the UK, the Wendover Dean viaduct will use double composite construction, which will see a bottom concrete slab added to create a hollow structure which is relatively lightweight but also very strong. The bottom and top slabs will be made up of precast concrete panels, whilst the top deck will be constructed using form travellers with concrete poured in situ. The construction of the piers is somewhat similar to the Tame Valley, using precast concrete sections, which in this instance are being manufactured in Northern Ireland. The piers are assembled on pile caps, below which are four piles sunk 45 metres into the ground. Once erected, the piers are filled with concrete to form a strong structure which will be able to withstand significant longitudinal forces. As you would imagine, pushing a 3,700 tonne structure across the tops of the piers will put an immense load on the piers. However, I am told that due to the use of the low friction pads that the force will in fact be less than that of a train travelling at 360 km per hour applying full braking whilst travelling over the viaduct. It is this force, which is also caused by acceleration, which is referred to as the longitudinal force. This is the third major viaduct being constructed for HS2 that I have featured on this channel, and I find the different techniques being used for each viaduct fascinating. Despite the Tame Valley and Wendover Dean viaducts both being constructed by the same joint venture, they are using very different techniques. 
but each viaduct has to be looked at individually, with the topography, site conditions and access having to be taken into account. The Wendover Viaduct will be much higher than the Tame Valley Viaduct and as such provides unique challenges. In addition, access is required for articulated dump trucks to move earth from north to south. Using the push launch method means earth moving can continue whilst the viaduct is being constructed. The construction method also means less land is required during construction. Just before I sign off, I'd like to say a big thank you to my Patreon and YouTube supporters who help to make videos like this possible. If you would like to consider supporting the channel, then there'll be links in the description below. I would also like to thank HS2 Limited and EKFB for the invite to the site. It was greatly appreciated.